Here we go. You Samatron. <laughs> Team Mate. Right. Okay? Mate. Wow, we're back again. I feel like we have to talk about the trade war. Because oh. we just have to. Every time I open the yes, paper, yes. I see Captain Orange in there. He just keeps kicking the Chinese hornet's nest, doesn't he? Don't tell me about China. I know China. Now what we've got, Tommy? Trade war. Economic, technological trade war. He's all he's doing is protecting his 2020 election campaign, isn't he? If he can prove he's getting more jobs in America through these tariffs, his belt of voters going to be up and about and loving it. It is a short-sighted view for the country. Uh, he's put uh, the tariffs down and it's getting deeper every week, isn't it? So Trump essentially just wants jobs back in America for the first time in 30 years. Yeah, that's right. But weirdly, he wants to bring back jobs that are never going to come back. Factory jobs. Factory jobs. Tasks that robots can do. Right. So if you bring back those jobs, you basically can't compete globally. So you might bring back the job, but then your country goes backwards because you can't compete. What we're seeing is the start of all countries around the world nationalising and going back to local manufacturing. We've seen it with Brexit, we're seeing it now with the trade war with China and America, and we're about to see most countries head back home when it comes to manufacturing. And really, now we're seeing deglobalization. The cost to make something has dropped. We can bring the factories home. Yeah, so soon, what we'll see is, is that, and it's almost as if it's not by design, it's almost like lucky and ironic that with artificial intelligence and robotic manufacturing, the low cost labor advantage that countries like China had is evaporating. And now with automated manufacturing and efficiency, it can come back home and it will. But I can't help but think that what we're gonna see soon is the world's biggest economy become China. Because in the last 30 or 40 years, they've developed a deep and wide supply chain, especially with robotics and technical manufacturing, which other countries do not have. What we're gonna see is the Donald handing over the mantle to economic superpower, China equals number one. And I'm so glad to speak Mandarin. Ni hao ma. To all my friends out there. Mo fei shuo, tong hua. So now we're going to see everything come back to our shores. And China's going to hold most of the power. But technology is still exponentially getting better, right? So later, we're going to see manufacturing do another step change. Yeah, the next step change is what we call desktop manufacturing. So 3D printers now, they're a weird curiosity, plastic stuff. Let me give everyone the update. Already we can do more than 300 materials in 3D printing. We will have molecular nanobot printing where you can pretty much make anything. So the re-globalization will happen, Tommy. You know when it's gonna happen? When we realize that this climate crisis isn't going away. Just economically, we're gonna split for quite a while. And then when the climate change disaster really starts to hit, when it has a massive impact, we're gonna re-globalize as a species. And we're gonna realize that we have to work together for survival, for mere survival. Starts with the Donald, ends like that. That's Start now, soon, later. <laughs> the orange demon started it all. And then now, we end with climate change. Donald and the climate, who knew? You want more together. now, soon, later, later? Hit subscribe on YouTube. Go to futuresandwich.com. You'll find everything there. Yeah. Thanks again for watching. We'll there's see you me, next time. There's me, there's Tommy. You're going to see us. It's... <laughs> oh, and if you reckon there's something interesting happening now, shoot us a note. Yes! Tommy at futuresandwich.com. Steve at futuresandwich.com. And let us know what you reckon.